All right. Thank you so much, Miss Judy. What a blessing it is. Aren't you glad, by the way, you can have a wall of prayer uh, around us? Praise God. Take out your Bibles. We're going to be in John chapter 5 this morning. John chapter 5. And I uh, did want to say a special thank you to everybody that had a part in the Sunday school breakfast. Let me tell you something. We don't normally do that. But we may make that a regular, no, I'm just kidding, all right? Just, uh, some people were rejoicing, everybody else was freaking out, all right? But uh, man, that was wonderful. We had a big breakfast this morning. I'm talking bacon included. My goodness. And uh, if you came looking for fruit, you, were, you, you would not have been happy this morning, all right? We made sure that there were biscuits and gravy on the table and sausage and eggs. And there was even quiche for you highfalutin people. All right. So, uh, but I did want to say a special thank you to everybody <clears throat> that helped with that. And uh, it was wonderful. And let me encourage you to come back next week. Now, listen, we have two weeks left in our Sunday school uh, campaign. All right, so next week, now it's just in Sunday school, all right, so we're just having a good time during our Sunday school hour, and, and then we get to get into our Bible study before we come into the worship service, uh, but next week is Over the Boulder Sunday, right, and uh, this is called I Want That Mountain Sunday School Campaign, so it's going to be Over the Boulder next week, we're going to have a yodeling competition, I'm not joking, all right. You come, you work on your old ladies, all right, your old lady, and uh, make sure you're ready to sing it for us, and we're going to have a good time, all right? So, no, you're not required, all right? But the more, hey, the more involvement your team gets, the better off you help them in their team. And next week, Lord willing, we're going to have a thing to give out to everybody. Everybody that comes will get a s'more next week. And then the week after that is going to be Flannel Shirt Sunday, all right? That's two weeks from today. So everybody wear your flannel shirts. And everybody that comes, and since I want that Mountain Sunday, everybody that comes on that last Sunday is going to get a Mountain Dew to take home with you. And they're just having a good time, all right? Right now, I believe it is Team Blue that is in the lead, all right? Come on, Team Blue, you got it. My goodness. And uh, let me tell you, I believe you can have a good time in the Lord's house. Amen. All right. And then Team Red, Team Red is cooking up something. All right. So don't, they're not, it's not over yet. All right. But uh, praise the Lord. All right. John chapter 5. I'm going to ask if you would please to stand with me for the reading of the Word of God. Amen. John chapter 5. And we will begin reading in verse number one. The Bible says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. What, whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto them, unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would bless us this morning. We have gathered here, God, to hear your word. 
God, I know that those that are here today need something more eternal than I can say. Lord, that is why we're looking into the perfect law of liberty. That's why we're looking into the scriptures. And I pray that you would have your way today. If there is someone that does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray that they would hear, that they would believe your word, and that they would accept Christ. Lord, perhaps there is someone here that they know Christ, but there's some other struggle. There's something that you're dealing with them in their life, and it could be something as simple as belief. But Lord, whatever issue it is, I pray that you would meet every need, no matter what it is. And Lord, that you might be glorified here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. We're going to look again at some of these verses and I'm not preaching this whole message exhaustively from this portion but I do believe that there is an important issue. I believe that there is a critical question that uh, we need to consider today and if you would look with me again at verse number 3 and the Bible says in these talking about the porches there at Bethesda, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, listen, waiting for the moving of the water. Waiting for the moving of the water. And I want to ask you a question today. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Can I tell you, by the way, there are people that are waiting for a lot of things to happen in their life. My goodness. Uh, Some people were, how many of you were just waiting for summer to come to an end? Aren't you glad that's over with? Um, It won't be too long where we'll be waiting for winter to come to an end. Uh, But there might be some people, whatever issue, whatever struggle you might have, and you might be saying, well, I'm waiting for this to happen in my life. Let me tell you this, you don't have to wait anymore about Jesus Christ. He has already come, and our hope is in Him. As a matter of fact, I just want to look in these verses here today, and I'm not here to talk about every part of this story, although there are many pictures that are found in this precious story in the Word of God. As a matter of fact, I mean, if I can point out some things, we know that this was a man, he was uh, sitting in a place called Bethesda, and it had to do with the afflictions that people were going through, and uh, that God had a plan. We know that this was a place called Solomon's Porch. We know that there were five porches, and the number five is the number of grace in the scriptures. We also know that it was by the sheep market. In other words, uh, as they would come in getting ready to um, uh, give their sacrifices, that they would often come by the sheep market, which was by the sheep gate. And uh, they would, um, if they didn't have one, they would purchase a sacrifice at that place. And we know that there was this pool there and uh, there was all of these porches around it to provide some kind of shelter for the people that had been afflicted. As a matter of fact, we find out that it was the people that were diseased. It was the people that had some sort of physical malady about them and by the way let me just say it like this it's usually not an encouraging place to be Um, every time I make a visit uh, to the hospital um, let me tell you and and, and I'm, I'm thankful for all of those that we have that are working in uh, the um, the health industry, I'm I am grateful for modern medicine. Don't misunderstand me here. But whenever I step foot after so many years, decades now of ministry, I, as soon as I step across and enter into the hospital, I'm always reminded of the pain that some are enduring. 
And isn't it something how that one floor differs from another floor? In one floor, you can be uh, welcoming a new baby, and in the next floor, it can be some kind of uh, heart issue that someone is getting ready to see a loved one go on, go on home uh, to the Lord. And uh, there's so much difference in, in pain and curing, and yet both of those things are necessary and can be found in the place uh, where they're dealing with these kinds of issues. And here we see that they were all, as a matter of fact, there in verse number 3, talked about impotent folk, blind folk, halt folk, and withered folk. Every malady that you can imagine, from disease to blindness to not being able to walk, is covered in these four areas. As a matter of fact, the number four in the Bible uh, pertains to the earth. And isn't the earth full of hurt? Some people would look at things and they would say, well, how can you believe in a God? How could a loving God uh, endure such hardness and such hurt upon this earth? And I believe that they're asking the wrong question. Because I believe that the proper question would be this. How is it that a loving God can endure man's hard heart? Because it is man's sin that made him imperfect. It is not God's anger. It is not God's, uh, um, uh, God's um, inappropriateness in his dealings with man. It has always been by man that he is enduring such afflictions as he has today. But we are entered into something here in verse number 3 at the end of the verse where it says that all of these people have gathered here for one purpose and that was for the one reason that they might wait for the moving of the water. Waiting for the moving of the water. And this man, it, uh, he engages in a, in a discussion here with, in a few short verses, we're reminded of um, that, that he was there for the same reason that everybody was there. In other words, he wasn't the only one that was waiting for the moving of the water. And people tried to say, well, well what kind of magical properties were in this water? Friend, I don't believe that you can, uh, and I've read numerous uh, uh, authors and numerous commentators, uh, commentators upon this portion of Scripture. And can I tell you this? It all comes down to this. Why can't we just accept the Bible as how it's written? You realize that you're going to be held accountable for what is written in this book? Not for what you think is written. Not for what somebody else thinks is written, but for what the Bible actually says. That's what you're going to be held accountable for one day. Hey, we're coming up with all kinds of things. Uh, there was no angel. It's just, I heard someone say that um, what it was, it was properties after they would, since it was by the sheep market and they would kill these animals and then they would wash the animals in this water and then there would be a stirring in the water and it would um, put out all of the, the um, uh, different essences and all of the different, uh, the essential um, nutrients that were, for, let me tell you something, they're working way too hard at this thing and they've got way too much time on their hands. Is I'm going to tell you what happened at a certain time of the season. There was an angel that was sent from God for that specific purpose to stir up these waters to provide somebody with the healing. You say, well, why didn't he provide it to all? I'll deal with that in a moment. But you need to know that right now this is your opportunity. This is your chance. What are you waiting? 
Here's your question, and by the way, I do want to point out a few things that he was waiting for in this portion of Scripture. As a matter of fact, he was waiting like everybody does, and it says right there at the end of that verse there in verse number three, verse number three he was waiting for moving of the water. Now in verse number four, he explains that, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. By the way, I do believe that the water's turning today. And I believe that Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the Bible tells us that he is the water of life. The Bible says in John chapter 4, it's somehow this is in John chapter 5. Look back if you would at John chapter 4 and look with me at verse number 10. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. Aren't you glad by the way when you're not waiting for the water instead the water comes to you and Jesus in chapter 5 comes to this man that had been there for 38 years hoping, waiting for the moving of the water and never able to be the first one in. But I tell you first of all here this morning he was waiting for a commotion says here that they were waiting for the troubling of the water. As a matter of fact, in verse 3, it uses the word moving. And the word moving, it means something that is stirred, something that is agitated. Friend, let me tell you, there's a whole lot of people that are waiting on their feelings before they get things right with God. They're waiting on a commotion. You realize that we're living in a time where people would rather be manipulated into spiritual decisions rather than into obeying the word of God and, and accepting the gift that Jesus Christ has provided. Let me tell you this, friend. We have a blessed faith, but not a beguiling faith. We have an excellent faith, but not an exploiting faith. We have a ministering faith, but not a massaging faith. We have a spiritual faith, but not a staging faith. We have a powerful faith, but not a puppeteer hearing faith. We have a Jesus faith, but not a jockeying faith. The Bible says in Jude 18 how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having the spirit. And friend, let me tell you this, and I'm not here trying to hurt nobody, don't misunderstand me, but you need to know Know that there's a lot of churches out there that are full of snake oil salesmen and all they're trying to do is manipulate people and manipulate people for the purpose of money or manipulate people in order to get some kind of a, a fix so that they feel better about themselves and feel better about their life or they come to church looking for an expectation in an experience of some kind of feeling that can be manufactured by a performance. That was all free. Can I tell you something though? That ought not be true of a true house of God. Amen. You say, well, what are you offering? I'm offering to you Jesus Christ. I'm not offering to you healing. I'm offering to you the healer. I'm not offering to you power, I'm offering to you the Almighty. I'm not offering to you some experience, I'm offering to you Him that is above all. That is the only thing you will ever need in your life is Jesus Christ. You see, they were looking, He was looking for a miracle rather than the Master. As a matter of fact, take your Bibles quickly and turn with me to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, 
And I'm not saying, I, you know, I am not trying to suppose everybody in their own heart. But let me tell you this, friend. There are a lot of people in, uh, even that are on the airwaves today. I, well, you can't really say airwaves. Maybe you ought to be able to say through satellite dishes and through cable companies or whatever. And uh, they you have these big mega churches. And I remember as a teenager turning on the television at night and people getting on with all their flashy jewelry saying, hey, why don't you send in your prayer request to me? And God has a special gift for you. And, and uh, boy, if you send me $100, God will multiply that to 1000 Let me tell you something. You better stay away from junk like that. And these are people uh, that are willing to give you an experience experience but they're not willing to give you Christ hmm. matter of fact look at this verse Luke chapter 23 and verse number 8 this is uh, here when uh, they are getting Jesus they're getting ready to crucify him and they part of their mocking time they they sent him to Herod look if you would for, for him to examine him look if you would at verse number 8 and the Bible says when Herod saw Jesus he was exceeding glad for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. He said, oh good, yay, I, I get to see Jesus here. Oh my goodness, I hope he's going to do something magnificent for me today. I hope I, I, and boy, if he just puts on a show for me, I'll tip him and, and I'll, I, I'll do whatever he wants me to do. Friend, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is not a pet. Jesus Christ is not a 911 number. Jesus Christ is not some novelty. Jesus Christ is everything that is essential to you, not only in this life, but also in that which is to come. Amen. I'll tell you another thing that some people are looking for. They want a meeting place. Oh, they were all gathered here. By the way, it says here, look if you would, uh, verse number 3. It says in these, talking about these porches there at Bethesda, Solomon's porches. Here's what it says. In these lay a great multitude of of impotent folk. Can I just say, there's some people, all they are is about the crowd. In other words, if they didn't have their thousands, if they didn't have their hundreds, they wouldn't know how to act. They're looking for a crowd. And let me tell you, tell you this, friend. There are some people, they're all about the meeting place. Let me, tell you, let me explain it like this. Friend, it's not, I'm glad for our place here. Don't misunderstand me. I thank God for this place. I thank God uh, for our beautiful auditorium. But you need to understand this. If, if fire came in here and destroyed this place, you need to know that it hadn't touched the church. We are the church. People are the church. It's not found in a building. And just because we don't have fog machines and lasers and, and uh, you know, uh, have black lights and all of this kind of stuff, you need to know that the power of God is still on full display because God's trying to work in the heart of man not to just give them some silly experience. Aren't you tired of all the other yet? Aren't you tired of everything that's fake? Aren't you tired of, of uh, all the promises that man makes? Why don't you look into the Word and find the promises of God? And God will reveal some things to you. You need to know this man had an expectation. But he did not expect Jesus to show up and rock his world. Amen. You need to know this. Jesus is not a performer. He's not a little monkey doing tricks so that you can get and raise your little money or, or get your little answer to your prayer. You think you can order him around? He is not a genie in a bottle. He is God Almighty. And we need to serve him and revere him as such. So not only do we see that he was waiting for a commotion, Look at what else happens here. We find here in verse number four something else because this is something that everybody knew. What was it? An angel. Let me say it like this. <laughs> he was waiting for a cherub. 
Hmm. He wanted to see something else that was going to happen. You realize how many people are all about angels today? Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, they think it's all about some spiritual entity. The Bible says this in Galatians 1.8, But though we or an angel from heaven preach unto you any other gospel than that we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Can I just say it like this? I think I'll just stay with God. I think I, I ain't looking for some extraterrestrial being, amen. I'm not looking for some existential experience. I'm not looking for some angelic being. I'm not looking for a cherub from the other side of glory. I'm not looking for anything. All I need is the Lord. And friend, there are people today that they're all about forces that are in the heavens and forces over here and forces over here and my goodness friend you better be careful because Hollywood is feeding us a bill of goods that it's all about force friend there are things that's going on in the spiritual realm that a child of God has nothing to ought to have nothing to do with ever in their life Quit trying to find your connection to forces. Quit trying to find. Let me tell you something. This Christian life that we're living right now, I'm, not, I'm glad I've got a faith that goes beyond Darth Vader. Amen. I'm glad I've got something that goes beyond whoever the new one is. Was it Ray or somebody? Let me tell you something. I've got me a real God with a real power. And you may say, oh, but I want the power. Hey, friend, that's where you're wrong. You don't need the power. You need to glorify him for he only has the power. Instead, we get to looking for, like I mentioned a moment ago, uh, expectations and experiences so that we can feel better about ourselves, which leads us to another issue because then people are proud of their own spiritual enlightenment. Oh, this is what an angel told me. Well, I just read the scripture where the Apostle Paul said, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) Matter of fact, I'm not going to tell you where, but it was in town uh, off of Shorter, Shorter Avenue, uh, uh, it wasn't right on Shorter Avenue, but I went into a business establishment and uh, I was trying to buy something for uh, the preacher. We had a revival last week and we had the preacher in and wanted to buy him something nice. And uh, when I went in, um, this uh, lady, uh, she said, uh, uh, she said, what's this for? And I said, well, we've got a preacher coming in and and I want to get him something nice that, that he'll enjoy and, and, and everything like that. And so, um, she, and, uh, and she said, oh, she said, well, then have you heard? And I thought, no. <laughs> it's like, football game or, uh, you know. Uh, and she started telling me about all these revelations that she's been getting. And she said, well, I don't know if you believe in the Holy Spirit. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, we believe in the Holy Ghost, but we believe that the Holy Ghost is going to work within the bounds of the Scriptures. You see, everything, everything, everything that the Holy Ghost is going to testify about is found in the truth of the Word of God. People don't know their Bible. They don't understand. They think it's all about your experiences. Friend, how about God's expressions? And God's expressions are found in every page of the Holy Writ. And you need to know that this book right here is the only truth that you will ever need. And even Jesus Christ, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not you, not your spiritual whims, not your spiritual enlightenment, not your enlightenment from somebody else that was born in Timbuktu or China or 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 Salt Lake City or anywhere else, friend, you better beware because they'll deceive you and take you in the way that is not good. It's all about spiritual enlightenment and spiritual experience and spiritual this and spiritual that. People will think it's about their spiritual visions. Just because you had a dream, maybe you need to lay off the dominoes that night or something. That's not the authority. Why don't you get in the book? 
Why don't you find out if it's in the book? Why don't you uh, compare everything with the scriptures that God has given? Otherwise, here's what it is. They become a God because then they say, well, let me tell you my vision. Let me tell you my experience. Let me tell you what I think. Let me tell you something. What I have to say to you doesn't matter junk. The only thing that matters is what is found here in the word of God. And Jesus Christ has given to us. John 1, 1 through 3, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God, the same as in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. He's the Word. <clears throat> one more thing I'd like to show you here, very, and we'll be done. He was looking for one more thing. Look, if you would, please, John chapter 5, down at verse Number, well, let's read verses 6 and 7 together. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Is this what you want? Look at verse 7. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming another step is down before him. He was looking for one more thing. He was waiting for a companion. Everybody all right? I want you to see this. He's waiting for a commotion. He's waiting for a cherub. Number three, he was waiting for a companion. By the way, can I tell you, there's still a lot of people, they think that everything in their life will be fine if they just had somebody that they could call a friend. You remember one of your first friends in your life? May, there might be some of you in here, you actually remember meeting your first friend. Oh, it was a big day. It was always a big day in my kids' lives. Oh, I met a friend today. They'd come in and just make an announcement. Well, good. I'm glad you got a friend. Let me tell you, this man didn't have a friend. This man didn't have a friend in the world. Nobody that cared about him. Nobody that would comfort him. Nobody that would encourage him. Nobody that would enable him. There was nobody. Aren't you glad, by the way, though, that I've got a friend? Aren't you glad that you can have a friend? <laughs> there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And Jesus Christ, he said, henceforth, I call you not servants, but I call you friends. Friend, I'm glad to tell you that there is a friend that can care for you. There's a friend that can carry you. There's a friend that is concerned with you. There's a friend that, that cares about every issue that you're going to come up to in your life. I'm glad that we've got a friend in Christ. Oh, friend, let me tell you this. Don't think for a moment that nobody cares. And don't think for a moment <laughs> that this church family doesn't care. Let me tell you something. The Lord doesn't just tell, excuse me, the devil doesn't just tell uh, unbelievers that there's no friend. He loves to tell believers that there's no friend. He loves to tell everybody that nobody cares. He loves to tell everybody, you're on your own. He loves to tell everybody, nobody gives a rip about you, about your situation, about your struggle, about your issue. Nobody cares. Just let it go. But friend, let me tell you something. That's why Jesus was here. He came to this man. <laughs> the man had no idea who he was. He said, hey, will you be made whole? And the man said, oh, I just wish I had someone that cared about me, not knowing that he was talking to the very one whose entire life was about coming. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus was there because he cared. He said, oh, man, you need to know that I'm here to save you. I'm here to heal you. By the way, let me explain this very quickly. Jesus' question at the end of verse number 6, wilt thou be made whole, goes far beyond his problem. You see, he could have been healed of his, his physical issue, but still not been whole in the inside. And aren't you glad that in Jesus Christ we have everything that can make us whole? Whole. 
not just help us with one part of our life. He is the answer for every issue and every struggle that you're going to have in your life. So the question to do to you today is pretty simple. What are you waiting on? If you're waiting on a commotion, you can go anywhere and find that. You can watch a Benny Hinn concert and find that. Oh, are you waiting on a cherub? You're waiting on your personal thing, your personal experience. You want some spiritual enlightenment? Why don't you just accept the word of God and receive it and believe in him? Oh, I just wish I had a friend. By the way, I think there's one more question that needs to be asked here. Who are you willing to go to hell for? Well, I don't know. If I just had a friend, it'd be different. No, this is your chance. Jesus is with you right now, and he's telling you, you need to accept him as your Savior. Are you going to accept his gift? And he'll be the best friend you ever had. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll encourage you when you're down. He'll lift you up when you fall, and He'll strengthen you when you're weak. That's the kind of friend that you can have. But what are you going to do today? The Bible says this, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Would you accept Jesus Christ today? What are you waiting for? Let's pray. We'll have our musicians come. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask you a question this morning. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I heard your message. And just to be honest, I'm not saved. I'd like to be saved. But I can't say that I'm 100% sure that I'm saved today. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to come to you. I just want to pray. If that's you here today and you say, Preacher, just being honest, I'm not saved and I'd like to be saved, but would you pray for me? Is there anybody like that here today? Just put your hand up and put it right back down just where you're at. Preacher, just pray for me. I'm just not saved. God bless you. Anyone else? Preacher, pray for me. I'm not saved. Maybe if you're here today and you say, Preacher, Lord God spoke to my heart. Maybe, And you, you may say, but I am saved. And I rejoice in that. But if you say, preacher, boy, I needed that today. Because it is easy for me to look for those things. It's easy for me to get hung up in the commotion. It's easy for me. I have an expectation in my heart and in my mind about church. Preacher, it's easy for me to want an experience. Preacher, it's easy for me. I, how much I, I just want to see an expression of love. I want the feeling. If you say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart today about something. Would you pray for me? Every head bow and every eye closed. But you'd say, Preacher, that's me. Put your hand up all over the building. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you let God have his way? If God spoke to your heart this morning, I invite you. If God took the time to talk to you, would you take the time to talk to him? And I invite you to come down to this altar this morning. Let's all stand.